I'm Brian Young, professor of weed science at Purdue University. My top tips would include number one, know your weeds. So that would be understanding what are the weed threats that you don't have right now, but you should be concerned about. Are they going to move to my farm? Are they on my neighbor's farm? Are they a problem in another state? We've had a lot of people surprised that, oh, I have water hemp. I didn't think I had water hemp, or I have palmer amaranth, and I didn't know I had it. I just saw it was another pigweed species. And so understanding what weeds are in your field is critical. Also understanding what herbicides are resistant to. So we've had some that said, well, I've had water hemp in my field for years, but all of a sudden this year I can't control it with my group 14 herbicides post-emergence anymore. Well, how well did you control it really the year before or the year before that? Were you really watching your weeds enough that you're truly surprised today that they're not gonna work? Identify any non-chemical means of managing your weeds your problematic weeds. So is it gonna be a mechanical, such as tillage? Is it gonna be cultural, row spacing, seeding rate of your crop? Is it gonna be something like cover crops? What can you do next year to somehow improve weed management? Because that gets you thinking about, well, where am I weak? Is it because I don't have enough herbicide sites of action in my overall weed management program? Or is it how I use them? What can I do in there to improve weed management for the next year? You know, I can easily say that the first year some growers identify they have a resistant weed problem, they can lose 50% of their yield. I know that in the case of glyphosate and PPO resistant water hemp. So hundreds of dollars per acre can be lost with herbicide resistant weeds today. The species called water hemp, you know, we have tall and common water hemp, but really it's all the same. It has multiple herbicide resistance. It has spread to a lot of different areas across the Midwest. Indiana, 20 years ago, wasn't a major water hemp state, but in the last two years, herbicide resistant water hemp has been the biggest herbicide resistant weed of concern in the state of Indiana. We have this concern that growers are first identifying, oh, I have water hemp, and by the way, it's also resistant to these herbicides that I didn't know about. I guess it came with the water hemp that's now in my fields. And so it's a major issue. We do have glyphosate and ALS and PPO resistance, which are the main culprits in challenging us in soybean weed control. In the Midwest, states such as Illinois, Iowa, Missouri, even Minnesota. They've had glyphosate resistant water hemp for years now and so it's just increased in terms of number of counties involved or the density of the infestations that we now have. And also what's the implication if I let this one water hemp plant go to seed this year, what's the impact for next year? What am I going to do about that to help make sure that it doesn't get established even further and cause major problems? So we do have some options. Make sure that you do have at least two very effective herbicides for each target weed species in your crop. Make sure we're getting effective coverage. We need to make sure that each application is made to kill the weeds, not just suppress them. Bayer has a broad portfolio of herbicides that are tough on water hemp. Visit cropscience.bear.us slash herbicides to learn more.